Greetings, everyone, and welcome to our Sky Tonight program. This is Seth Mayo again, curator of astronomy for the Loma Planetarium at MOAS here in Daytona Beach. And in this edition of the program, we're covering the dates of July 11th through July 17th. We're going to start by talking about the full moon this week and how it's a supermoon or perigee moon. Then we're going to mention Jupiter now sliding into our evening sky and joining Saturn. Then we'll shift to the morning sky and talk about all those planets we can still see at that time. So let's take a look. We'll start things off by talking about Wednesday, July 13th with our full moon. And traditionally, the full moon in July is referred to as the buck moon. And that's due to male deer or bucks that are traditionally regrowing their horns at this time of the year. Sometimes we call this thunder moon, which is very relatable here in Florida since thunderstorm season has begun once again, or the hay moon as well. And for this particular full moon, we once again have what's called a super moon. We had one last month and we have one more this year in August. So they all happen in a row, all three of them. And this is the second of all three and it happens to be the largest of the supermoons out of those three that occur this year. And as we've mentioned before, a supermoon is when the moon is a little closer to us near what's called perigee or a perigee moon and when it's full. So the moon will look a little bit bigger and a little bit brighter, but we always say not by much or it won't be noticeable for most people. But it turns out on average, a supermoon is about 16% brighter and about 6% larger than a normal full moon throughout the year. So there is a slight difference. And what may be noticeable is that tides are a little bit stronger. The moon's gravitational pull along with the sun stretches out the earth along with the oceans, which causes our tides. And during a perigee moon and a full moon, this is accentuated by a little bit, which means that high tides will be a little higher and low tides a little bit lower. So that they'll be a bit more extreme. And that's the biggest difference we will notice. Now, of course, with any full moon, and especially when you hear about a super moon, more people are probably paying attention to it, which means that a lot of folks will probably be looking at it as it's rising out of the east. And as you know, a full moon can only occur when the moon is opposite of the sun. So when the sun is setting in the west, the full moon immediately after is rising at the east or southeast. And since a lot of folks will be paying attention to it during moon rise, they may catch what's called the moon illusion when the moon looks artificially larger than usual since it's so close to the horizon, your brains will play a trick on you making it seem like it's actually larger than it really is across the sky. And you may see that kind of reddish orange glow when it's low since the reflected light from the moon is cutting through more of the curvature of our atmosphere. And one last thing to note about our full moon and again this super moon is that the full moon this year is usually situated inside the constellation of Sagittarius the Archer or the Centaur kind of near the horse part or the rear end part of this summertime constellation. So you may notice that if you're looking in that area and looking for stars and constellations around the moon. If you happen to be up a little bit later by the end of this week or into the weekend, we're going to find another planet join the evening sky. And very recently, especially in last week's episode, we talked about Saturn now well placed in the evening sky as well. And we're seeing it earlier and earlier as we move through the summertime. So here on the evening of the 16th and really getting into the early morning of the 17th, which of course is Sunday morning, this is just before midnight and you can see Saturn's a little bit higher up since it's had a little more time to reach that point in the sky. You'll have the waning gibbous moon by then at that time of the week. And if you stay up a little bit later, just around midnight, and had a really clear view of the horizon. There you will see another planet rise and that's the planet Jupiter, finally transitioning into our evening sky. You'll probably have to stay up a little bit after midnight to actually see it high enough for you to easily see. But it's nice that it joins that area and it's gonna be rising four minutes earlier each evening. So you'll have a better and better view of it as well as we go through the summertime. And Jupiter is brighter than Saturn, so it really stands out as the largest, most colossal planet in the solar system. Another great planet to look at through binoculars or a telescope. Doesn't have rings like Saturn, but as you may already know, it has a beautiful moon system. Sometimes you can see three or four of the Galilean moons. Those are just a handful of the 80 moons we've discovered so far around this system. And if you have a big enough telescope, maybe the cloudy bands of Jupiter as well. Those gaseous clouds can really show up if you have the right equipment. But even if you don't, that's okay. The moons are great. And just seeing the planet with your own naked eyes is special as the second brightest planet in our sky behind Venus. 
As we continue to talk about the planets, we're now back in the morning sky, which I know we've talked about a lot lately, but that's where all of those planets had been spread across the sky, and it's been really great to get up early to see them lined up in different ways. Now, earlier in the summer and late spring, we had Mercury in the mix as well, but by this week, especially by the weekend here, Mercury will have reached what's called superior conjunction with the sun, and that's when it's on the other side of the sun and we can't see it at all. So it's now invisible to us, at least as seen from Earth. But we have all these other planets still, four out of the five naked eye planets still visible in the morning, along with the other two we just talked about. So we look over here to the east and northeast and there you'll find Venus, still the brightest planet in the sky and still high enough above the horizon. But don't wait too late into the summer because now Venus is on a trajectory towards the sun's glare once again. So we don't have a ton of time to see Venus in a great spot, but right now it's still nice if you're up at the right time. As we move across the sky here, we have Mars there, which is also nice, not as bright as these others, but may stand out because of its reddish glow. There's Jupiter again, so we can see, of course, in the morning and the evening sky. And then what's nice about Sunday morning, the 17th, is that waning gibbous moon again will be in the mix as well. So it kind of adds to the solar system lineup going on. So we have the moon there. And then all the way over to the western part of the sky here, the southwest really, for us, we have Saturn. So it's really nice to have that in the morning. I know some folks are early morning risers and like to get up and look at the night sky, or take a walk, or whatever you may be doing early on. You still have a great view of those planets that look like non-twinkling stars spread across our sky. Hey, thanks for stopping by for another edition of the program. If you find yourself in Daytona Beach, please stop by the Museum of Arts and Sciences and check out a show in our Loma Planetarium. We're running shows daily. And of course, if you want any more information about those programs and what we're doing in the museum, please check out our website and tune into our other social media channels. We're posting some great content from the museum all throughout the year. So we we'll hope to see you back here again. Take care and of course, happy stargazing.